Hello folks, today in this video I'm going to talk uh, briefly about the cam chain automatic tensioner and that's what you see in the video right here. I'm going to go ahead and install this on the bike now before I move on to getting involved with the top, the very top end and the cams and the cam chain and the timing and all that kind of thing. Primarily because there's free access to installing this right now without the carburetors and such and I'll get this mounted and get it out of the way. Uh, you can see it's a spring-loaded plunger arrangement. It, it mounts essentially like that on the, against the back of the cylinder block. This, uh, this metal-faced rubberized plunger pushes against one of the uh, adjuster or tensioner mechanisms that swings like this and puts tension against the cam chain. This uh, set screw right here, a bolt, actually controls the depth of the plunger. Essentially once you st start developing a lot of cam chain noise like a rattle because the uh, the chain is developing uh, slack through stretching you loosen this this bolt off here let the plunger push it in against the chain you snug this down and then you tighten down the lock nut. That's really all there is to it. And then obviously you have the two screws that go through, or bolts that goes through like that. Uh, these bolts are not new. These are the originals. I just simply wire wheeled them. Uh, one note on wire wheels, I use a brass wire wheel for almost all of this kind of work. In fact, I don't even have a steel wire wheel mounted uh, on my, um, my grinder because um, I just don't care to use it. I prefer brass. So these are just cleaned up. They're in very good shape. They look essentially brand new. And then I bought a new gasket, or actually the gasket, I have two gaskets. I had bought a gasket, a few odds and ends, the original Kawasaki part number. You can still get this from Kawasaki. And I actually got a second one in the complete gasket set I bought. I guess I hadn't thought that through very well. So I have extra, an extra gasket, but I'm going to go ahead and use this one, the Kawasaki supplied item. So all I'm going to do now is take the gasket, I'm going to apply a thin coat of uh, anti-seize to both sides of the gasket. This is one of those I am going to seal with, uh, with the um, anti-seize. It'll help prevent the gasket from sticking to the block later through heat bonding. And uh, again, I'm not going to overdo it, just a very thin coating. I'm going to rub it in with my fingers. I think I've shown that before, before I go ahead and mount this on the engine. It's Kawasaki part number 11009-1980 and is uh, still readily available through a Kawasaki dealer online. So now I'm prepared to install the tensioner uh, to the back of the block. Obviously, I've cleaned this surface really well. And that you can see the tensioner when you push on that plate activates the chain. This has been cleaned thoroughly several times. Uh, I uh, retracted the plunger. It's worth noting I pulled the plunger back, tightened this set bolt down. I want the pl plunger pulled back until I complete the cam work or at least get the cams in on the top end so I don't want this extended all the way. So I pulled that back and tightened it down. The gasket's been installed here, light coating of uh, anti-seize on both sides as well as the fasteners have anti-seize on them and everything's been cleaned up really well. So it's, it's a very straightforward process. I'll go ahead and get this started with that and simply tighten down the screws or the bolts. I'm going to use a quarter inch drive socket on this simply because it's uh, a little finer and uh, size and a little easier to work with.
So I've got the bolt snugged down uh, using the quarter inch drive uh, 10 millimeter socket. I couldn't find any torque settings uh, in any of my reference manuals for uh, these two fasteners. So I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to go with the standard default. These are 6 millimeter 1.0s or coarse pitch bolts, very standard. And the uh, industry torque setting is typically recommended between like four and a half and six foot pounds. So I think I'm just going to torque these to five and call it good enough. I'm using my quarter inch drive torque wrench and I'm going to do this in two phases. So this is in inch pounds. This particular uh, torque wrench measures in inch pounds. So I have to convert foot pounds to inch pounds. So Five foot pounds, or five, I have to multiply times 12 because there's 12 inch pounds in a foot pound. And that's equal 60 inch pounds. So 12 times five is 60. So I'm going to take it up halfway to 30 inch pounds first, both of them. And then I'll bring it up to 60 inch pounds, which will equal five foot pounds. And then I'll finish it up. This is a clicker also like the other one. See I almost had them there to begin with. So I've readjusted the torque wrench for 60 inch pounds which equals 5 foot pounds. back and recheck them. Double click. And we're good. So now I know I've got both of these at 5 foot pounds or 60 inch pounds. I'm not going to adjust this back out until I get to top end finished up and then I'll put tension on the chain. So I've got this component done. By the way, when you work with torque wrenches, make sure that when you're done with them, that you set them back to their lowest or zero setting, whichever is appropriate for your particular device, to take the tension off the spring so you don't lose your calibration. Next thing I'm going to do is install the top chain, cam chain tensioner assembly that you see in the video right now. This metal projection, this loop on the one side, goes to the front of the bike. So as this is sitting right now, the, the front of the bike is to my left. This will sit like this. First thing I'm going to do is install a little bit of uh, thread locker, Loctite here on these threads. Loctite blue, non-permanent. You don't want to install the permanent type because you, you may have to take this off in the future if you've got to take the cams out to adjust the valve uh, lash. But you do use a, uh, a non-permanent thread locker. So I'm going to apply the thread locker and go ahead and torque these, these um, Allen head bolts. I think those are 5 millimeter, but I'll obviously check that. Torque these to 80, approximately 80 inch pounds. So I'm going to install the, the assembly. And again, you've got to be careful you don't drop anything down this tunnel. Because if you do, it's, it goes all the way down to the bottom of the bike. So you position it over the chain like that, line up the bolts, and get them started. One other thing that I'm not sure I mentioned is I did replace the dampers, the isolators. There's one on the top and the bottom here and on the opposite side. The originals were very uh, hard from age and heat, hot oil. And these are still available, these, uh, these dampers from, from Kawasaki, believe it or not. So I just ordered uh, four new ones. And uh, you notice I'm getting all four of them just started. I don't want any of them loose. I do not want to run the risk of one of them popping out somehow or other and dropping in the lower end. And then I'd have to deal with that. So I want to make sure all four of them are at least started so that they can't go anywhere. And then I'll go ahead and snug them up.
I'm going to talk a little bit about the buckets and shims that's used to adjust the valve clearance on these types of motors. You can see this little plastic container I put together. So when I took the engine apart some time ago, this was used to keep track of which bucket and shim came out of which cylinder. So uh, this row is exhaust, this row is intake, cylinder one, two, three, and four. So when I took each of the buckets out of the valve train, that's, this is called a bucket. And some reference material might refer to this as a lifter. It's really a bucket, and this shim goes up underneath. I took note of the number on the shim, which is the thickness, and wrote it here. So this is a 265, this is a 260, 265, 270. The reason I did that is in the event that something was to go wrong, you never know, and I dropped this or whatever, um, I have a record in each um, section of what shim was originally in that spot. And uh, I didn't have any problems with it, but that was just, again, to protect me from myself. So this fits down over the top of the valve. The shim goes in the bottom here, like that, and it gets inverted. And then the cam actually activates against this and pushes this down, and it, act, and it works in that kind of a motion. So the shim is used to adjust the clearance between the top of the bucket in the bottom of the cam as the cam lobe comes around and you check that with a feeler gauge which I'll have to be doing here a little bit later after I get everything put together. So before I can put the cams in I've got to go ahead and uh, install each bucket and shim for each cylinder or each valve in each cylinder. These, are, these have already been cleaned up pretty well. And you can see based on the wear pattern that this smaller circle actually was here and went like this, and the larger wear pattern went against the top of the valve. So I'm going to go ahead and put these in now so I can get the cams in. As you can see in this shot, I got ahead of myself a little bit and started to put the similar lube in the bearing journals for the, for the uh, cams, which will go in after the uh, shims and buckets go in. So I'm just going to do a, a little brief uh, illustration here of how this goes together. And, Trust me, this is not difficult. Keeping track of which bucket came out of, and shim came out of which cylinder. This is number one exhaust, and this is the bucket and the shim for number one exhaust. And there's not much to it. I like to take a little bit of assembly lube on my finger like this, and just put it on the top of the valve stem. And I'll do all four of these while I'm here. This takes a little dab. You can see I also covered up the other side. Primarily I was covering up the cam chain tunnel just because I don't want to take a chance of dropping anything down in there. That would be almost catastrophic at this point, especially things like shims and small components. So I got a little bit of dab of uh, some little bond there. I'm going to take and basically just take this, this shim and it fits right down in the middle like that. And then the corresponding bucket goes, and it's been cleaned, goes right over the top. Like that. Moving on to the intake. I've already put a little assembly lube there. I'll take the 265 shim, which came out of this position. I'm going to put it right there. Take the corresponding bucket again. I'm going to put just a little bit of lube around the edge. Just put a little lube around that that's going down in. Don't have to overdo it again, just a little bit. I've got this lubricated. So now I'm going to go ahead and install it like that. And now I'm just going to repeat that for each of the remaining six buckets and shims.